people have been wanting a video on the TMB, the Gen 2 with the inserts and how the inserts work, uh, how to assemble uh, TMB and just why we went with the inserts. So essentially the reason why we did this was manufacturing the TMB was very difficult because we have these funnels. Um, it's essentially a reverse funnel um, and the point of this, the purpose of this is to allow the gas to start expanding earlier in the muzzle brake than it would have before, which gives you more gas deflection, more meaningful gas deflection, and allows you to just control exactly where the gas is going. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a TMB performs so much better than the competition. Um, so yeah, that created a lot of manufacturing problems for us because it's very difficult to do. Uh, you know, create complex internal geometry from the outside. So the solution I came up with was to just completely bore out the middle of the brake and create that geometry outside and then put it into the brake. Um, so yeah, that, that solved pretty much all of my issues. It has other benefits, you know, such as these are upgradable um, so if we come out with new inserts in the future, you can get more performance. You can change the caliber of your muzzle brake at a user level at home, which is cool. Um, and it allows me to manufacture hundreds of these, which are not caliber specific, then manufacture tons of caliber specific inserts. And depending on demand, I can assemble brakes uh, that you know, customers want instead of having a whole bunch of brakes on the shelf that are a caliber that people don't want. So there's a lot of, you know, cool benefits to this. Um, but as far as the design is concerned, um, the bore of this brake, it is plus minus one thou. It's held to that tolerance and same with the inserts. So the insert can't physically move up, down or side to side. It is inserted from the rear and it can only move forward or backwards. So what holds this in place is we've got these two pinholes um, for each insert and every insert, if you look carefully, there is a, let me just focus it, there you go. There's a cutout on the top and bottom of each insert. Um, and what that allows us to do is insert it from the rear, line it up, punch in two pins, and then that physically holds it and stops it from moving side to side, uh, forward or back because it can't move up, down or side to side. So, and to put into perspective how strong the pins are, each pin has a double shear strength of 800 pounds uh, of force. So yeah, two, that's 1600 pounds. It's, yeah, they're very strong. Um, and they're more than strong enough for the task. So, yeah, it, it's cool. You can punch them out and change calibers at home. Uh, I wouldn't recommend punching them out to clean it. The TMB is specifically designed with the coatings and the finishes that we're doing uh, to literally just drop in CLR, just leave it overnight, and it'll come out looking brand new, and the finish will not be affected at all. Um, you know, so that goes for the titanium nitride that we do for our team shooters. Uh, we started doing that with Morgan King, um, just as a you know cool encouragement for the the world champs for him. Um, the black DLC that we do again, that's not affected at all. Um, the black DLC is an actual better coating than the titanium nitride as far as you know longevity and toughness is concerned. And then we have the electro polish. Uh, which is essentially stainless steel that's chemically passivated and cleaned. Um, and yet that is, again, also unaffected by CLR. So how do we assemble one? Well, let's try and do this on camera. So you insert it from the rear like this. You'll tap it into place, align it up, put our... There you go. Just drop an Allen key and throw it like that and it holds it in place. And as you can see, 
there you go, that's how the insert sits in there. Um, and the cool thing is the inserts extend forward, allowing us to control where the gas is going and create a much smaller cavity here for gas to escape left and right out of the brake without it touching a surface and being used uh, for recoil reduction. So it's a cool system. Uh, let's punch in some inserts and finish assembling it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so that's finished being assembled. As you can see, all of the inserts in there. And we even have an insert here in the first uh, port where it, you know, the, it, the insert essentially sits flush up against your muzzle and that controls how the, uh, the blast essentially comes out of the muzzle, which is beneficial. Um, we found it was more beneficial than just having it completely straight and open like most brakes do. Um, also, just while we're touching on these, that first initial insert, that is 30 cal, uh, in a 6.5 brake, uh, the, the next three inserts will be 6.5, um, and the, this last area that's machined into the brake, that is also 30 cal, because we noticed zero uh, measurable difference in terms of performance for having 30 cal on that hole and 30 cal on this hole but those three are caliber specific because those did make a difference. Um, yeah, so let's punch some pins in and finish the assembly. So we just throw it into our fixture, hold it nice and tight. Clamp it down. Let's start punching in some pins. So the pins we use, these are heavy duty spring pins. They, like I said, they have a double shear strength of 800 pounds per pin, and they're actually stronger than solid pins. Because of the elasticity, they're stronger than a solid pin, um, and yeah, no amount of vibration or impacts or anything can dislodge these. As you can see, I'm using a hammer to hit them in. Um, they're pretty tight in there. They're not going anywhere. And yeah, we essentially do this for every single one. I assemble them all by hand. Um, in I'll just do the first four just to show you but pretty much there you go you got the pins you got the inserts and that's a TMV I'll put the uh, jam nut and the tuner on just so you can see and here you have the finished TMV with the tuner and the jam nut all assembled so it's no surprise the TMB has the most recoil reduction in the game when you consider all of its features and the attention to detail that went into its design. Um, yeah, it just, it redirects more gas than any other brake um, and that's why it performs better than any other brake. Yes, it has more blast, but um, yeah, if you want performance, you can't really have both. Um, and since we're touching on the design of the TMB, uh, the tuner, it's the only tuner on the market that actually locks in place and has repeatable settings. So as you can see, there's valleys for each setting uh, for the opposing set screws on the tuner. So the tuner, um, as you adjust it and then lock out uh, by screwing in the set screws, they bite down into these valleys and essentially you need to shear both of the set screws for the tuner to actually move uh, you know, on you 
when you bump it and fail you. So yeah, that's not really gonna happen. Um, we've tested it extensively, beating the hell out of it. And yeah, we weren't able to break the set screws or make it move. So yeah, um, and what I've seen in competition of people do to these things, I remember Taylor literally took a chunk out of a barricade um, with his TMB and we just laughed because of course it didn't move and it was totally fine. Um, but yeah, the only locking tuner on the market, the most recoil reduction, and uh, yeah, most definitely the best looking in this uh, this gold titanium nitride. But yeah, hopefully uh, that answered all of your questions, and uh, yeah, hit me up with uh, what else you want to see, and uh, we'll get that done.